Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus. Hello and welcome to Climate Now, our unique monthly update on what's really happening to our planet. In this special edition, we're here at the COP27 Climate Summit in Egypt with experts giving you a breakdown on how our climate is changing and why. Well, let's start with a quick look at the latest data from the Copernicus Climate Change Service, which shows that here in Europe, we just had the warmest October on record with temperatures almost two degrees Celsius above the 1991 to 2020 average. All of the areas in dark red on this map across France, Switzerland, Austria, parts of Germany, Italy and Spain had exceptionally warm weather last month. Now those are the figures for October, but they're part of a much wider trend. Europe is warming much faster than the rest of the planet. And to understand why, I met up with Pateri Talas, the Director General of the World Meteorological Organization. Professor Talas, why is it that Europe is warming so much faster than the rest of the world? So uh, we have seen uh, more than double warming taking place in Europe as compared to the rest of the world, and uh, that's because of uh, of the warming in the Arctic, which has had a big impact in northern part of Europe, and then globally the second most uh, warmed uh, region is Mediterranean region. In the Arctic, uh, the melting of snow and ice is, uh, is, is contributing to, the, to this, uh, this warming, and uh, in the Mediterranean region, it's getting drier and drier, so there's not enough uh, evaporation to, 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 to damp this, uh, this warming, which is usually taking place. The warming that we're seeing here on land would be even more rapid if it wasn't for the oceans. It's calculated that they are absorbing up to 90% of the excess heat in the atmosphere trapped by greenhouse gases, and they're suffering. Well, I'm here with uh, leading ocean scientist Jean-Pierre Gattuso. Thanks for being with us. Jean-Pierre, we know that the Mediterranean has suffered repeated heat waves over the past couple of years. What impact is that having? The main effect of marine heat waves are massive mortality of invertebrates and plants, mollusks, sponges and corals. Between the surface and 50 meters in depth, there are many invertebrates and plants that are affected negatively and that die. Do the decisions that are taken here at COP27, do they make any difference? Are they really going to change things like acidification and heat waves? The negotiations that are taking place here are obviously extremely important. The scenarios that have been projected by the IPCC show that if the Paris Agreement is implemented quickly and fully, we can stabilize temperatures and ocean acidification. This does not mean that we will return to the situation as it was before. It means we can stop the warming and stop the increase in acidity. Here at COP27, the atmosphere is businesslike because everybody knows that the window is closing to reach the goals of the Paris Agreement and limit global warming to well below 2 degrees Celsius. So is there any real progress on reducing emissions? Are greenhouse gas concentrations going up or down? Well, I'm joined by Claire Fison, an emissions expert from Climate Analytics. What's the situation right now? So unfortunately, greenhouse gas concentrations in the atmosphere are still going up. Um, a recent estimate came out and said they're at 416 parts per million. That's higher than it was last year. That's higher than it's been in all of human civilization. So a very worrying trend because as carbon emissions continue to go up, climate change impacts will continue to get worse. Is there any expectation that the greenhouse gas concentrations in the atmosphere will actually stabilize soon? So that really depends on what we do, especially what we do over the next eight to ten years. Um, if we get emissions down to zero, then yes, we will see a levelling off in those concentrations and we'll see temperature rise starting to plateau and climate change impacts stopping to get worse. Recent assessments suggest that actually we're going to head for around 2.4 to 2.8 degrees of warming, so really not a place that we want to be. Well, that's all we have time for. You can hear more from the politicians, campaigners and scientists here at COP27 on Euronews and Euronews.com. And I'll see you next time. Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus.